Hello, hello, everybody. What's going on? It's Jesse Lee. You can call me hashtag Boss Lee or the People's Mentor. And today's podcast is going to be unbelievable. What's up, YouTube? It's Jesse Lee. You can call me hashtag Boss Lee. And I hope you love the video you're about to see. I'm pretty sure you will because it's always content over here. I want to tell you about a couple other things, specifically one that you can also get some more value from. And all you need to do, and you can do it now, just pause this video, is go ahead and text YouTube to 844-277-9762. I'm going to be really upping the text game and it's literally me texting you back. So if you want to have a more one-on-one -on -one conversation with me, enjoy the video, subscribe, comment below, and make sure you text YouTube again to 844-277-9762. Because I love this man's energy so much. I have to take you way, way back. The year was 2016. Uh, actually, I went 2015. I don't even know. But I met you a long time ago and I met this man when he had just gone through one of the craziest financial crises that I would never wish on even my worst enemy. And he still had a positive, funny attitude. I was like, this is my kind of person. And so we sat at a lunch at a sushi restaurant in Las Vegas. And he was just so kind to me when I was, I was a nobody in network marketing. Nobody knew who I was. And we were just having lunch and he was funny and endearing and charming. And I was like, oh, I really like him. And then somebody actually told me his story, which we might get into at a, uh, at a later time in this podcast. And I just thought, wow, that's somebody people should want to be around. Uh, and so I love him for a lot of reasons. He's a super, super savvy businessman, extremely creative. I already kind of mentioned his attitude, but his attitude's awesome. Nobody ever has anything bad to say about him. But what I love the most is that he's a daddy of six beautiful babies, one girl, one girl. Uh, and I love how he shows his family and his life and everything on social media because so many people are like, oh, isn't that weird? Like that a CEO of a company would do that. And he doesn't. And so he's a successful CEO. He is the one who sent me that skincare I really liked in my Instagram. So you can check out Body Pro. It's B O D E. -P PRO. I'll link it in the show notes as well. It's awesome. It's Japanese. Konnichiwa. Uh, but he is just such a fun, loving man to be around and has so much business advice to share with you. I would love to bring to the line as soon as you screenshot this, put it in your story, put it on your Facebook, put it on your Instagram, send it to a friend, none other than my dear friend, BK Bareko. I, I I'm going to have to take it up a notch for this, for this podcast. I'm telling you, uh, Jesse Lee, um, I still remember the day I first met you and I think you were going through a little bit of a crisis on your own. You had just, I think you got terminated yep. from that direct sales company and you were like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm going to do. And it's, and it, it, it reminded me of the advice my dad used to give me. He would, he would say that the, the, the situations, the things that things that's happened to you don't determine your destiny. It's how you react, how you respond to the things that happen to you that determines your destiny. And you have taken that moment of crisis in your life and have developed it into, I, I gotta tell you this, you are, you are with what I think in my humble opinion, the hottest company in, in network marketing and you are the hottest leader in network marketing and you date a Ukrainian. So, you know, Marina Wari and I put the props out to you for that. Um, <laughs> for those of you who haven't ever tried pierogies, you gotta do it. I just gotta tell you, you'll never go back. <laughs> so, <clears throat> thank you for having me on here and and in my uh six they're not six babies my oldest is 13 my youngest is seven i've got two sets of twins uh seven-year-old twins and uh 12 year old twins um it they'll doesn't always run in be my your babies they'll always be your baby it is it, it is it's funny because i've discovered some a few things about myself is that I am not a good homeschooler. I have like such mad respect for teachers. It's so funny that, you know, it's always like, okay, the teachers and you go into the parent teacher conference, you're like, okay, how are my kids doing? And then you, you don't really treat them with the level of respect they have earned through this whole Rona quarantine period that we're all going through. And we're learning about all this stuff and how much we appreciate the healthcare workers out there you know, yeah. the first responders, the people on the front lines there. But thank you for having me on. And hopefully I'll be able to share a few things with, with your listeners that help take them from where they are to where they need to be. And where they are may be in a crisis. And I've got, I've got some experience in, in dealing with that kind of stuff, no matter how, no matter how uh, big of a crisis you're dealing with. Um, it's always happening for a reason. And I believe that God allows 
things to happen in your life to stimulate your creativity mm. because some really great things can happen when you're when you've got your creativity stimulated and you seem to be um in rare form this morning or this afternoon it's, it's afternoon for you it's morning. i'm in rare form come on i'm always in a funny mood i love that you said you're not a good homeschooler this probably has no value to the podcast but i want to know which kid do you want to suspend and or expel? Come on, Dad, give it to us, BK. Be well, honest. Praise God that the good the good news is is that day nine into this 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 quarantine, um, spanking and prayer have been brought back to school. So it, <laughs> it is, and and they're all going to graduate tomorrow because I'm like just whatever. I will I will laser print. I will Google graduation certificates. You guys are done. Go. <laughs> So school's out for the summer tomorrow. God bless. I'm sure. But I, I gotta tell you, this this math homework they have for kids is tough. They're like asking me these questions, and I'm like, oh my gosh. And it's so funny because when I was in school, they said you have to learn your time tables because you'll never carry a calculator with you everywhere you go. And thank goodness for Steve Jobs because we thank have calculators. You. That's right. I've posted that meme before too. I love that. Okay. Good. So a couple of things you said I really love. I love that you mentioned it's not what's happening to you, it's how you responded. And I think that's a perfect segue into if we discuss a little bit, if you're open, you don't you can tell as many details I'm, as I'm you want. I'm overly possibly. open. I'm overly okay. open. Okay, that's you know kind me. of what I thought. Uh, so can some of you, I know a lot of my listeners are very familiar with Vima. And so for those of you who are not familiar with Vima or are like, oh, wait, wait, hold on a minute. Yes, that Vima, that Vima, I want you to tell about the rise of Vima, the crash of Vima. This is the CEO of Vima. So BK, could you, do you want to kind of take us through all that? Maybe some lessons you learned through the challenges that you experienced with the, the rise and fall of Vima. I think the biggest lesson that I learned is that you're not always understood. Even though things make perfect sense to you, you got to be care. You got to make sure that you're understood better. Um, 2000, I think seven, I started a company. So it was like 14 years ago called Vima. Um, coming off of a company called New Vision, which was the whole essential minerals, colloidal minerals kind of a craze that went on. Um, uh, created a product called Vima, which is sort of the a liquid um, phytonutrient, vitamin mineral. Did What's funny is, did some clinical studies back eight, nine years ago when clinical studies on nutritional products aren't really a big thing because they're uh, expensive and, and you don't always like to see what the results are. But one of the big things was immune markers and how drinking Vima helps increase your immune system. And that seems to be a thing nowadays. Um, so we are actually sold out. So don't plug it because I'm actually sold out of Vima. And uh, I am like, I am the Purell of nutritional products, I think. I, I, <laughs> have established so um but we're getting more in at the end of uh, end of april so it's just it's just incredible but so starting this company, we're done with corona by the end of april but yes yes so immune health yeah, I, believe, I believe that and you know what i i and when you go on my social media you'll notice that i i you know i was watching robert kiyosaki and he goes people are like batteries you need the positive and the negative the balance and and you know, I post a lot of stuff, but I, I, obviously I like to post a lot of humor stuff. And I, and I send you a lot of the stuff that I can't post because I'm a CEO. Um, and what's up with the lame that think you can't post your kids as a CEO and stuff? I guess they're, you know, anyways. People I don't know. Be, you just but I, love, I really love that about you, though. Honestly, like, I wasn't just saying it. I love that I feel like, let's say you were my CEO. Let's say we weren't just friends. Don't I think it's awesome. Like that. Oh, don't touch you. You did try to recruit this little this little hot market right over here, a hot item. Um, but I, I love that because when when I what I loved about what I love about you is that if you were my CEO, I would know where your heart is. I would know where your values are. I would know about your family. I wouldn't think that I couldn't have. I don't want to say balance, but whatever balance is for you, I think what you're showing people by showing your personality and making people laugh because you're hilarious. I think we're like seven minutes in and everyone knows you're half comedian. Like, I just think that, and so am I, so it's perfect. But I just, I love that about you. And so I think anybody who says something like that or, or the CEOs who are too scared, you know, or too prideful or whatever it is, I just, I wanted to make sure I mentioned that because I, I really love that about you. And if I were in your company, I would want, people to know those kinds of things about you, what actually drives you, what inspires you, what motivates you. So I, I just wanted to 
I, no. I appreciate it. And, and, and hey, your CEO, Brian Underwood, he's a good friend of mine. Amazing guy. Uh, I'm, I'm jealous of his branding. Um, he's making the right decisions for the right reasons. Um, you know, one of the big reasons why you guys have got such a such a great company is because of Brian and and what he's uh, what he's brought to the marketplace. And so, um, okay, you guys cannot come in here. I, <laughs> no, seriously. This, okay, this is what they're making for breakfast. This is what. Come here, say hi. This is Cashton. Hey, Cashton. Okay, you can't talk to me. Oh. He's got an empty plate, y'all. He this probably wants lunch. Yeah. Oh, we're That's all about the paper products. No. Okay, when I say, here's the thing, is I can run a company, but I can't run like seven-year-olds. No, a seven-year-old, friends, is seven-year-old taking over the school right now. Is what's happening. Uh, every kid gets two three dollars. My son's negotiating with me. Every kid gets three dollars. I'm gonna send you a bill for this. Seriously, go. Um, <laughs> But anyways, Brian Underwood is Bye. an amazing CEO, great guy, um, great branding, great decisions, great marketing, great everything. All right, go ahead. All right, well, I want to know about Vima. And the dogs, right? and the dogs barking. This is a true quarantine uh, podcast that you're doing here. <laughs> hey, I love it. It's real life. People can relate. If you guys can relate, you can screen sh screenshot it, share it, and tell them, it's okay, BK. We relate. We relate. That's it. That's it. Um, I forget what I was talking about, but... I want to know about the rise and fall oh. and then challenges okay. and lessons you learned through it. Started a company um, 14 years ago, Vima, uh, about, about three, four years in. I see, I, I, I cr wanted to create a liquid, like one a day concept vitamin. I think people know they need to take supplements, but they get, and that's what I love about your drink, not diet shirts. See how I pay attention to you? It's almost creepy how much I watch you. <laughs> I love it. But, but I, 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 14 years ago, I thought everybody knows they need to supplement, but they're getting what's called pill fatigue, where they get tired of taking all of the pills. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so I, I had a Chinese MD with, you know, uh, training in traditional Chinese medicine. And he also had a PhD in genetic obesity from, from LSU. So he had this Eastern Western philosophy of, of uh, wellness. I said, create like a one a day supplement. And he, so he went in with the phytonutrients and the plant source minerals and the vitamins and all this, created Vima. Vima was great, except I'm sitting here thinking to myself, at the time, Red Bull had just come to the marketplace in America. And I had read that it's like a $5 billion company. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my goodness, this is like caffeinated soda pop. There's like zero nutritional value whatsoever in this. And so I'm, I, I was in the shower one day and I thought to myself, what if we are able to actually, do you guys have any idea how distracting? I know. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, go. I'll be done in a little bit, okay? And we're gonna paint, we're doing a painting project. If you're following me on social media, Seriously, art and craft class right now. We're this interrupting. Is, okay, no, oh, make them another one. My kids are making. Can you lock oh, the they're door? taking. No, I can't. Can you Just go, please. Just find them this whole round. Okay, so what they're making is Oreo cookies dipped in dipped in pancake batter, and I'm somehow okay with that. <laughs> go. I'm sorry. Just go. Anyways, it gives me some ketones. That's what they. So, I know they really are. They really are. So I am going to, so I, I swear. Yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you. I don't know what I just agreed to, but I think it c includes control of my company. <laughs> oh, well, you know, those are those mistakes that happen during quarantine. So I'm in the shower and I'm thinking to myself, this is like the poison of America's youth, this energy yeah. drink thing. Yeah. And I kind of go off on things. And I didn't even have any kids at the time. Right. So I thought to myself, what if I took a dose of Vima and I put it into a can and I created a healthy energy drink? And so like 11 years ago, I created a brand called Verve um, and it was the first healthy energy drink, either uh, retail or network marketing. That's what I love about this industry is we bring products to the marketplace that need to have a story told about them. And, and that's why, and I, and I did traditional advertising for for seven years and i'm and i'm uh i'm okay okay go get out of here please thank you very much okay it's my seven-year-old 
And he's, yes, he loses all of his allowance. So what I do with my kids is I, I know, Jesse Lee's like, note to self, never have him on again. So actually, we can go into this because I know he has a really cool bribery system. Do you want to tell them? Is that what you're going to tell them? I got, every one of my kids has a credit card um, from Greenlight. If you go to greenlight.com, and what this allows you to do is you give them a card and it's got their picture on it. And every kid's got a credit card. And then so every Sunday they get allowances and they get $25 a kid. You can just put it on your phone. It goes thing. And, and um, that's their, but they lose tallies for every time they make like somebody cry or they make me mad. <laughs> um, and you know, they have this, I have a tally system. So what I tell them on Sundays is like, okay guys, let's look at your tallies. I put up my notes here and this is all the things you did. And, and this is your allowance for the week. And so it's sort of like a way to motivate them to be nice to each other. And it taps into the greed aspect of it. But I'm, I'm telling you, it works except for this morning. It's not working, but we're day nine into the quarantine, so yeah, I have I think nothing works anymore. This All right. So that's here kind we of are. creative, so though. You know, that's a creative solution. You could probably think of some ways to utilize that for your organizations or maybe your own kids. So I don't think that's, I think that's good. And Bela, his daughter, he only has one daughter. She has, she, there's no limit. Bela does no wrong. <laughs> and I love that. I love that. Oh, Women rule the so world, cool. BK. Is kids, they will have their, on their phone, they'll go on Amazon and they have their credit card tied to, it's a debit card tied to Amazon. And so when they want something, they put it in their cart and they save up for it. And then all of a sudden they get like a package delivery with their name on it. And they think that's like the biggest, it's coolest cool. thing in the world. So that's- So energy fun. drink, Red Bull kills people. Energy drinks are terrible for you. You created Vima. Vima did what? Uh, came out with the first ever healthy energy drink called Verve. And it, it, it really, because you basically get in your nutritional needs in a beverage and you get in caffeine. Um, this one has, has collagen protein in it, but it, so it gives you everything that, and we're sold out of this too. So don't try to order it. Don't plug it either. I'm like the worst guy to have on a podcast. It's like, I remember in the old days, you know, we used to answer the phones. Um, attitude is everything. Hi, welcome to Vima, we're attitude is everything. And way to get busy, it sounded like you were saying we're out of everything. And now that is actually almost the truth. So <laughs> well, anyways, so we get this, this, this guy, you know, so I, I, I reach out to a guy, actually he comes to my office, Gary Vaynerchuk. Yep. Um, I was, I think I was either the first client of VaynerMedia or one of the first clients of VaynerMedia, but I didn't have any social presence whatsoever. And this guy comes in, if you know Gary Vaynerchuk, he swears a lot. And he's like, you suck, you suck. I can't believe you're successful and you suck. And rather than get defensive, I said, all right, so teach me how not to suck. And so he's like, okay, get on this. So we hi I hired him, we did some branding um, with, with Verve and we start attracting young people. And, and their whole pitch, and this was, this was back when, you know, there wasn't the kind of opportunity that we had like before the, the quarantine. Um, and so the economy wasn't booming and these young people were basically getting all this college debt and, and getting gra graduating with jobs that they can't get when they got out of school. And so their whole message was don't drink Red Bull, don't drink Rockstar, uh, you, you know, don't drink Monster, drink Verve. And if you want to get into the business, you can make money. So that little pitch took it with, with the guy Alex Morton and, uh, and Brad Alcazin, and that just absolutely exploded. And we actually increased in sales by $100 million in one year, Woo! driven by the Verve brand. And so we got big, um, but we also got the attention of the regulators. And here we are in business for 11 years. We don't hear any, que no question, no text, no email, no phone call from the FTC. And then on April or on August tw uh, 21st in, uh, in 2015, I get a temporary restraining order where they had taken 30 US Marshals and 15 FTC agents. They surround my home office like we're selling crack, okay? Like we're, like we're drug dealers. And they shut me down um, and I couldn't say anything. And I had, and, and, it wasn't like they were like asking me questions or how did we, they thought I was a cold blooded pyramid scheme targeting college kids. And 
it was proven that we weren't a, 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 a pyramid scheme, but the damage that they did, you know, because we were selling in about 40 plus countries around the world. And they, and I'll shorten the story here. Anyways, one press release, 8,900 media outlets picks up. If you Google Vima, um, it's not pretty at all. It's like, oh, it's college, the pyramid, all this. They don't tell you that, hey, we were the first company out of 47 companies that actually got their company back and we're still, we were operating. And I actually changed the, uh, I created a new company, a sister company called Body Pro because Google has a really long memory. And a big part of our, of our business model is we need to be able to have an opportunity. And when people that don't understand the whole story go and Google Vima, they go, oh, these guys are scammers, click. Yeah. Um, and we're not scammers, people. I'm telling you. So anyways, so that led to Body Pro, which was uh, a little over two years ago. And uh, we're big in Japan. Getting, we got a little bit of traction in America, but we're really big in Japan. That's where the skincare comes in because the J Japan is the number one market for skincare in the world and $20 billion. And it's like the new Paris is Tokyo. So um, by the way, real quick plug, the skincare is awesome. I like it, and Brianna Deerdick likes it. I was talking to her about it, and she said, oh my gosh, is it BK Skincare you like? I said, it's good. She said, I know. So two of your favorite ladies, love it. Awesome job, well done, Japan. She good job, Body Pro. Too. We, have a, we have a nootropic happy product, and she's like, can you send me more? I said, all right, absolutely. I like happy too, I do. I'm absolutely, all right, so that's my story. And so here, you know, I have this company doing $200 million a year. We actually, when we got attacked, we were the number one trending topic on Facebook and on Twitter. Um, we, were, we were just everywhere. All the news, Wall Street Journal, New York Times. Matt Lauer on the Today Show telling people I'm a scammer. Matt Lauer. <laughs> How'd that work out for him? Um, so so it, it was like everywhere. And I am usually this happy guy that deals in happy thoughts and all this guy. And to have... I couldn't get $20 out of my ATM. I mean, they seized all of my assets, all of my money. They seized my company. We got it back 30 days later uh, to operate. Um, and, and it was shocking to me how the people that you thought were your friends didn't really turn out to be that close after all. Um, and, and one of the biggest things that I had to really come to grips with was the fact that I used to wake up every morning guys can you i have an audience of three in here <laughs> and they're all eating oreo pancake cookies <laughs> can you guys please just let you know what just just give me five more minutes five more minutes i will give i will give i will give everybody no i'll give everybody an extra five dollars for wow, five dollars. That's that's a little rich for my blood. Oh. Wow, you better everybody get the down, down, kid. But everybody that doesn't leave gets 20 tallies. No, just okay, if you leave, you get five bucks. If you lose, if you stay, you get 20 bucks. So the ticket price, I'm selling tickets to your podcast here. Hey, I love it. It's great. Cool. No, did there's no way. No, it's instant. They're little negotiators, by the way, podcasters. They're out here asking for eight dollars. I can hear it. I know. I don't know if I'm creating good people or bad people, but I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Time will tell. They Time will tell if Matt Lauer has something to so say. So that's kind of my story with with uh, with network marketing. But um, you know, I learned a lot, and and I was always the guy that people would come to for to to be able to um, ask for things or need things or fix things. I used to wake up and I'd have like 50 texts that I'd have to respond. And after that happened, it was like I woke up and there was like, for the first couple of days, I got a lot of texts because they were like, oh, bummer, dude, sorry about that. <laughs> sorry about yeah. that. But then it was just like crickets. And for 17 months, I was in this lawsuit with the FTC and we finally settled. And people ask me why I settled. If you're innocent, why do you settle? And because they have this unlimited supply of money that they can just print and I am not cut out to be in lawsuits. I am not a litigious guy. I, it, it's an energy suck. I just had to get back to something positive. And then I got you know six kids that I'm responsible for on top of all this. And so um, I'm happy. And I was, and I, I went through that, the valley of the shadow of death, but you know, sometimes God allows things to happen to you to bring you closer to him. 
And, uh, you know, he, people say he whispers and that's why you got to get close to hear what he wants to tell you. And so, um, it was great though. I mean, it was, it was an amazing company and amazing products. We still sell the products. We just sell them through body pro when we actually have them, but, uh, but, uh, it's, it's all good. And I'm happy. I want to go through a couple of those things. Cause I think there's a lot of life lessons in that. Uh, first of all, you, you did say sorry, so you let your Canadian hang out a little bit there. Uh, Calgary, but, Alberta. I was born in Calgary, Alberta. Ukrainian from Calgary. That's I what know, you got. I know your story. Uh, so I really, way before we had the uh, parade of children come in, you were talking about people you thought were your friends. And I would love to know some of the lessons you have learned overall. I you were going to ask me to name some of them. <laughs> No, I'm not that savage. I'm, I'm a little bit savage sometimes. Yeah, you get, get a couple drinks in you and you're like, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Uh, so, I, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't need to know who exactly we're talking about for sure. But I would love to know. Uh, hey, I hear dogs. I know. See, I'm not perfect either. What, what, are some, um, what, are some, what are some life lessons you learned through all this? Because you went to the top. You crashed all the way down. You're happy again now. Business is, is good. Where are the lessons in all of that for the people who maybe they see, they don't, they don't, they've never been in a situation exactly like you, but there's similarities in their story. Maybe they had a successful marriage and it crashed and they lost everything, or maybe they had a business. Like there's a lot of obviously similarities in your and my, my life. I was not, you know, number one earner in a company and then boom. Oh, yay. You're terrible. You're an awful person. Everybody hates me. You know, like I, I've been through that too. And then come back up again. So I'm just curious, cause I've talked about some of my life lessons I learned through all the craziness. But what are some of your key distinctions? Um, none of this is a surprise to God. The things that happen to you, it's not a surprise to God. And um, if there, there's always these lessons, you know, you talk about life lessons. The, 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 the biggest issue with life lessons is if you don't learn them, you're going to repeat them. Um, and so it's, it's important to, to pay attention. Um, and it's, it, and it, you know, we, we are in this, in this quarantine period here and people are talking, you know, you watch the news a little bit and I gotta kind of balance it out. I, I watch Fox News, so it's not as negative as, as the other news that are out there, but it is, it is, a, it is a, 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 an interesting time and a lot of people are, are feeling the, the economic results. My heart goes out to the people that, that are affected with, with the virus. Um, but it's it's this it's this level of appreciation that is being rebirthed in this country that will like the like the healthcare workers. I went to the post office and I thanked the postal people for working um, because I know we shut down our home office. Our, our employees were like, we they, you know we don't feel comfortable you know being exposed to to this, and so we we just out of an air of caution we shut down our home office. And here's the biggest problem is all my employees are like really happy working from home. It's all, we were set up to work remotely anyways before. Um, but they're like all really happy to be working remotely. And the level of appreciation you have for the people in your life, um, it, it, there, there's positives to pull out of every situation. Now, economically, when you think about what you do for a living and, and how people's weight affects so many things in regards to their health, what your people need to understand is what you guys do every day is a really big deal. I mean, you talk about getting people healthy and, and we have all this, all these accolades for the first responders and, and we stand up and we applaud them rightly so. But when you stop and think about it, when you have this, this team that is talking every day to people about health, they are actually kind of like pre first responders, you know, we, 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 we talk about immune system, we talk about weight, we talk about keeping people healthy, making the right decisions. Oreo, pancake batter Oreos are not the right decisions, people. I gotta tell you that right now. But what, you, what your people need to understand is the appreciation they need to have for what they do. And there's never been a better time than right now to talk to people about health. That's, that's the topic that's on everybody's uh, mind. And you're able to bring to that conversation some things that they may not know about. That's why I get back to loving this industry is because we're, we can tell stories like no other type of business, no other type of industry here. The other thing is it's the perfect time to talk to people about a home-based business. What's the, is that a shark? 
What are you doing? Are you oh. waving to me? Are you, <laughs> is this a signal? Most people just go like this, but you're like, hey. <laughs> this is how Jesse Lee gets your attention. <laughs> I was not signaling to you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's all right. I'm like, I'm like, I, I'm like so ADD. You know, the, my, I am too. It's okay. I went, I went, when I was going through my divorce and I was going through marriage counseling and stuff and the, and the marriage counselor says, have you thought of medication? And I'm like, you want to medicate this, this that creates all of this? <laughs> maybe I should, maybe I needed to tone it down a little bit. But um, I love that conversation, though, appreciating what you do, understanding the amount of people on here who probably are involved in a health and wellness company. And I, I actually, no one said anything like the pre first responders. It's true, though. You know, uh, just the people whose immune health was already very strong, the people who, you know, they were starting to say stuff like, um, I don't know if any of this has been debunked yet or not, but they were saying that, you know, obesity people, there's like no chance, like people are like they're, they can't bring them back because there's too many underlying health is issues. They were saying, um, ibuprofen, you know, like if you're having to take in a uh, little, you know, over the counter inflammatories like that, not good. Just like little stuff like that. It just kind of brings a whole new awareness to everything. He, as he grabs his verb to drink it, cause his hey. immune, immunity, immunity. I love it. That's fine. It's all fine. I can, I can key tone it up with you. I can, I can hang with the best of them. Um, so I, I, there was a lot of stuff in there though. So I, I heard, and you didn't say it, but you were still willing to be coached through a lot of this stuff. So before everything, it's like you were humble enough to bring in Gary Vaynerchuk as an example. And then through all the stuff you were, you were willing to be humbled by, you know, government regulatory industries and your friends, you thought you were your friends were clearly not your friends and all this stuff and you kept rising. So my question is, how do you maintain an, a good attitude like that? How do you say, okay, I'm not as good at digital marketing as Gary Vaynerchuk is, I'll just eat my humble pie and I will learn from him. How do you learn from all the negativity and, rise, and, and still rise? I think, I, I think it gets back to the life lessons that you had talked about earlier and the fact that everything, you have to have the attitude that everything happens to you for a reason. Rather than complain about what's happening to you, look for the reason that's happening to you and, and when you find those reasons, you become better. And, you know, we're, we're talking about doctors. Doctors go to seven years of school and they go into business and they call it a practice. Why do they call it a practice? Because the more they do it, the better they get at it. And it's the same thing with network marketing is the more you do it, the better you get at it. And, and you go at your own pace. I mean, that's what's wonderful about this. And I know you've got this goal. I was, I was watching you earlier today and you got this goal to pass Holton Bugs is a number one income earner for a month. And, and, and that's a great goal. But what is even more impressive is the person, the leader that you have to become to be able to hit that goal. And that's what I'm, that's what I get fired up about because um, you're always developing somebody like you and, and, and you have such a willingness to share and a willingness to, to help people succeed. And, and, and that's why you're going to get to where he was and beyond that. I mean, if you can actually think about, wow, my goal now is to do twice what he did. That's my new goal. And so it's so it's it's just a reflection of you as a leader. And and I was watching, you know, I'm a big fan of of Eric and Marina, and I know you were on the uh, on a chat with them before me. I'm like, hey, don't we have like a date in five minutes? She goes, I've got five minutes. I'm on with Eric, and I'm like, all right. Way more important. I did not say it like that. I did not say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but it is it is something that you got to stay coachable, no matter where you are in life. And the more you apply that attitude, the the faster you're going to enjoy the success. And that's what people need to understand is you know they get tired of of not having the kind of success that others around them are having. And just take a breather. You know, my, my Apple Watch was just telling me to breathe just a minute. I, I, got, I got no time to breathe. Um, and uh, and uh, just go at your own pace. And you're on your own journey. Um, comparison can just be so demotivating sometimes and motivating at the same time. And so you got to make sure that you just keep that balance uh, in your life and these life lessons when things happen to you, instead of reacting, act, say, hey, why is this happening to me? What am I supposed to be learning about getting kicked in the teeth by the Federal Trade Commission? And you, when you get a lawsuit that is 4,900 pages and, and the guy, the process server that delivers it goes, boy, somebody must really hate you. 
And I'm a guy that normally am used to everybody loving me. Um, it was a real, it was a real learning experience for me. Um, but I, I believe I'm better now as a dad. I believe I'm better as a, as a leader and as a CEO uh, than I was. I just don't have as much money as I used to have. But you know what? It's just, it, it, it don't just be happy with what you have and just keep striving for more. So you just brought something to my attention. This is part of our story, BK, that I must tell you, tell everybody. So uh, he just said you, you become more appreciative for everything that's happened to you and how comparison can be demotivating. And be, one of my first memories of BK and myself, we were at that, um, we were at GoPro and Tony Robbins was there and VK and myself, we, he saved me a seat in the very front row uh, of VIP. So I was front row with Tony Robbins sitting where you should be. Thank you. Sitting next to BK. And there was a conversation about this. There was a conversation of the things that happen in your life. Tony's saying this are happening for you, not to you. And you need to trade your expectations of people and situations for appreciation. So all the stuff that you are, that's making you upset in your life, it's not because of the person, it's because of you and your own mindset, conjuring up in your mind what that person is supposed to be doing for you. Now, for some of you, you, you're like, what? I don't understand it. I had so much anger and resentment towards my mother, my entire child, like it, just not that, whatever. In that moment, I, and this is for BK, he knew me for a day at this point, okay? I had my breakthrough. <laughs> Yep. I had my breakthrough. I realized that I was holding on to that and that uh, I, the reason I'm so, I was so in the past, just pissed at my mom all the time and just ugh, 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 was because I was expecting her to be a good mom. Not understanding that because she's the mother she is, I am a better, like you just said, a better leader, a better friend, a better mentor, a better coach, a better person. I will be a better mother for it. So these situations, so I'm sitting there and this was mine and BK's moment. I was not crying, okay? It wasn't crying. I was hysterically sobbing, like, ah! hey, I'm, looking for, I'm looking for Kleenex. <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of looking at me like, do I touch her? Do I walk, like, do I turn away? You don't know what to, he kind of like awkwardly puts his arm around me, like, what is happening? I'm like, it wasn't <laughs> awkwardly. <laughs> I oh. felt, I, my heart went out to you because obviously you're a crazy person. Um, <laughs> I was absolutely losing my mind and it was a breakthrough I needed. And I love that he just mentioned it in the sense of, you could say losing Vima, um, you know, because think of how much better of a CEO he is. Think of it, like he mentioned his parenting. He mentioned so many different things. And I think it's so important we, we have that. I do want to touch on, you mentioned um, comparison can be demotivating, but it can also be motivating. Do you want to give some examples of that to clarify for people who maybe heard that, but just kind of glossed over it? You, 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 you have conversations in your head. And I, and when I was watching you this morning, um, you were talking about, you, you, you're either talking, I mean, you talk a lot, whether you're talking to somebody or whether you're doing a podcast or whether you're talking to yourself in your head. And what people need to understand is that self-talk, um, you know, Jim Rohn used to say, control the controllables. One of the things that you can control are these conversations that you have in your head. And this is my, you know, my dad was in, I got into network marketing when I was nine years old. My, my dad got into Amway and I was raised in a free enterprise household and, you know, the whole thing. Um, and, and when you would, when, when words would come out of our mouth, he, and that were negative, he would always say, cancel, cancel. And it oh. was, and it was like, it was so, because he just, he wanted, he didn't want to say it once. He wanted to say it twice to make an impact that you can't, you got to start by controlling the words that you're speaking because the power of life is in the tongue, but you're also having a conversation in your mind. I read a book and I had him, had him speak for me, Dr. Shad Helmstetter, um, what you say when you talk to yourself. And he talks about how you would not go see a bad movie 100 times. Yet, when you make a mistake, when you do something wrong, you will play that bad movie over and over in your head a hundred or a thousand times. And the things that you say to yourself, you wouldn't actually find yourself saying to somebody in real life. 
Right. Yet you say it to yourself. The most important person in your life is you. And so um, it, it's important when you're, when you're doing comparisons to be able to um, control your self-talk. And when you see somebody like you, you know, just kicking butt and doing so great on everything and you have, it's like, it's like, it's effortless for you, but you weren't always like this. It took a lot of effort to make it look effortless. And you should be more of a, of a model rather than somebody that you want to compare. You don't want to, you don't want people to try to be like you. You want people to be themselves, but use your work ethic as what you compare it to. You know, that's one thing Gary Vaynerchuk says, hey, you may be better than me, but you're not gonna outwork me. And, and, and so that is what I mean by, it can be motivating, but it can also be demotivating. Cause you're like, oh, I can never be like her. But you don't have to be like you to become successful. You gotta be like you a lot more often and let that come out. Because just like a doctor practices and gets better, the more you do this, the better you get. And, and, and you know, I, I, I read once or I listened, I heard at GoPro, I think it was, one of the guys up on stage said, you know, you heard that leaders are readers and reading is important, okay? Um, but what leaders really are, are seeders. And every, we're in the conversation business and every conversation you have with somebody is like dropping a seed. And, and sometimes the crows are going to get it and they're, it's going to be gone. Sometimes it's going to fall on, you know, rocky soil, it'll blossom a little bit, but then, you know, once the first storm hits, it's gone. And some are going to fall on good soil and grow. And so what you need to understand is, is you're just in the sorting business. You know, you're good, the good people are out there and you just have to find them. And how do you find them? By having conversations. And so it's, what I love about this industry is it's not rocket scientists, not rocket science, because I barely graduated high school. I had to take six classes my senior year. People ask me how far I got through college and I go like halfway through the application. It is not for me. I am not, uh, I'm not a scholastic smart guy. I, my secret to success is I surround myself with people smarter than me. So if you're like me, just have conversations with people that are smarter than you, bring them onto the team because you're not selling you as much as you're selling the whole concept of this business model. And being in traditional business um, and in advertising and talking every day to business owners and everyone, every business owner agrees, hey, the number one form of advertising is word of mouth, yet it's the least compensated. So here our business model comes along and says, that didn't make any sense to us. We should compensate people for referring. And that's how, that's how our business works. And when business people hear that, they understand it, it makes sense to them, it resonates with them. And now, is there's never been a better time to talk about working from home, having a secondary income stream. You know, back when the economy was killing it, everybody's like, you know, network marketing, the industry, typically when it's booming out there, our industry goes down. Yeah. And then when it gets sucky and the recession comes in, our industry goes up. And so what we need to understand is right now, is there's not a better time to talk about health and there's not a better time to talk about a home-based business secondary income. And here's what I want you guys to understand is back in 2000, if you remember 2008, 2010, that kind of recession that we went through, great ideas, great inspiration can come out of bad times. And you realize that in that, during that period of time, um, Airbnb was launched, Uber was launched, Venmo was launched, Square was launched, WhatsApp was launched, and Pinterest was launched in a recession. So where you are right now, you need to understand that it's not the situation that's happening to you that's going to determine your destiny. It's how you respond to this situation that's going to what? determine your destiny. BK, when your kids are not annoying you, my oh. God, you're so good. Are you like, shut up. You got to lock up. You got to expel those kids. You've got to expel them. <laughs> that whole section, I just took two pages on. So I don't know if you were not, if you were not paying attention rewind the last, I don't know, eight minutes and please re-listen. There was so much good stuff in all of that. I don't want to repeat it because they can literally refresh it, but I, I didn't realize Venmo, Square, Uber, Pinterest, Airbnb, and WhatsApp all launched in the 2008 through 2010 recession we were doing. That's powerful. And it goes right back to, and closes really nicely with what you had mentioned at the beginning, which is of course, how you see things, your perspective, how you react, 
is truly why or yes, why people are successful. Um, so I respect your time. I know we're coming to a close now, but I would love to know if there was one final thing, BK. Oh, before I close, you have no idea what I'm doing right now. Well, maybe you do because you stalk me. It's fine. It's not creepy at all. <laughs> not in a creepy kind of way. What? <laughs> not in a creepy kind of way. No, not in a creepy kind of way. Uh, so the letter of this podcast, for those of you following along, is why. Why as in you rock, as in you are amazing, BK. Why? What else is the word for why? Yo-yo? Yo-yo. So that actually ends this word. So if you are the first one to finish this podcast and you have this entire word complete be the first one to dm me for a prize and so bk wow. my final i know i you know away, like a pack of toilet paper <laughs> <laughs> that's like worth a million dollars i don't know about that. i actually bought a bidet because i was not gonna have like hey one. that's big and all my all my bathrooms have bidets in them but it's the total Please. toilets and in, in japan that's like a big thing there you and i, I know. know we know yep. pierogies and we know bidets <laughs> I love it. So that is not my final question. My final question is, if there were one thing, if there was one thing that changed everything for you in your business, I want you to give us that one final tip. Um, it's not one thing that changes everything. It's a lot of little things done a lot of times. And, and what you need to understand is this time that we're in right now, this is going to pass. But what, what's not going to change is the fact that people will be talking. This, this has forever changed this generation. People think of this as this you know, negative cloud that is hanging over the world right now. But actually, every cloud breaks and, and the sun comes through. And the, the ray of sunshine for this is the fact that we are going to be able to forever change the way people think about health think about their immune systems, think about having a home-based business or a secondary income stream coming in, that is going to be forever changed. Now people that used to laugh at you will be like, tell me again about this. How does this work? Um, and, and you need to understand that through when all this negativity is gone, something amazingly positive is going to be, is going to be birthed from all of this. And it's, it's going to affect a whole generation. It's not just something that happened and people don't remember it. People will remember this all around the world for the rest of this generation. Yep, I agree. Well, thank you so much, BK. I love that. I love you. I appreciate you. For those of you who have not already screenshot this, shared it with a friend, please do so now. So, so valuable. I love you and I love our friendship. Thank you for your time. CEO of Body Pro, BK Bareko. Thank you, Jesse Lee. You're amazing. I love you. Bye-bye. Hey, 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 hey.